would they not have a better chance of actually getting a conviction if they charge them with voluntary manslaughter? I thought the same thing. I kept a legal expert here with me tonight to answer this kind of question. Did you hear what she said? I did, and I'll tell you, the, you would think that when you just hear it. But in actuality, when you take a look at the jury instructions, in some ways, that second-degree murder instruction, when given to a jury, is easier for the prosecution. It's always counterintuitive, but it's, it's actually it's easier very for the prosecution to do. Plus, understand this. When they charge with the second degree, yeah. that also puts a real incentive on the defendant to maybe take a plea bargain. Because then you're facing life... And if they'll strike the allegation of the gun use, which carries life also, you might take a manslaughter because you'll get a fixed term and you'll uh, at least know what you're getting. If, that, if they plea bargain, is that going to be national news? Are we going to hear about that, that with the sunshine law in Florida? Absolutely. You'd hear, uh, yeah. hear about it from not on New Year's. But you'll remember in the Conrad Murray case, I used to say that. I didn't understand why the prosecution there didn't charge second-degree murder because I think they would have gotten an involuntary manslaughter plea out of Dr. Murray. Oh, interesting. Now, this, the comment that Karen, Judge Karen was making before the break, that you have to show depra depraved mind, would you have to, if you were defending him or you were prosecuting him, would you have to show that in the moment he pulled his gun for that second before we pull the trigger, that was when he had a depraved mind? Or would you have to yes, prove that he generally had a depraved no, outlook? No, just in that second, but I will tell you my guess, and it's a complete guess, I don't know the evidence, but I'll speculate, which we love to do on cable. Um, my guess is, is that they believe they've got either on the 911 tape or some other statement that, that they think is going to show that there was a depraved mind. Hatred. Mm -hmm. Hatred's what we're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. If he's saying punks, yeah. if he's saying any other kind of word that they think... Uh, they're going to be able to make an argument and say, you can infer from his words what his mental state was. That'll yep. do it. Okay. Let's go now to Facebook. This is Lacey who says, now he can feel free to explain his self-defense to a jury of his peers. This is the right thing to do. I think everyone agrees with him. Right there. Except that's not true. Oh. Because he may be able to, when we talked about the immunity hearing, yep. that would not be to a jury. To that's a judge. to a judge. And that's before you ever get to a jury. So, yes, he may have to explain it, but it's to a judge. Let me ask something. I was, I was thinking about this new attorney that he has. Do, when you've defended somebody that's unpopular, have you ever felt scared? Have you ever been like you were in harm's way yourself? I, not for me, but for my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually, I've had the instance, uh, you, may, you may remember, when I was representing one particular hated defendant that we came back and there was, I had come back from a day trip with the kids and somebody had placed a bomb in a porta potty that was out oh front of the God, house. That's so right. that, that's what that. you really worry about. Oh. All right, Dee's on the line from Texas. What do you got there, Dee, for us? Hi. Hi hello, Dee. gentlemen and ladies. Dee? Uh, Dee? Yes, I'm here. Uh, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Okay, my question is, uh, well, for compound question and statement. All right. I've never seen a pr special prosecutor hold a news conference as such. Um, I remember Archibald Cox, yep. Ken Starr, yep. Walsh. I ran I've never seen that happen before. Uh it seems like she was holding a PTA meeting. Well, they, let me, hold, let me well, stop you there. Is, is, it, is it a sign of our times? Is it something new? No, I see. I, they, you mentioned Ken Starr. I defended Susan McDougal down in Arkansas back in the Whitewater investigation. And when they indicted her for obstruction of justice, they had a, they conference. Had a press conference. Yeah. They said some fairly outrageous things, uh, actually, and by comparison. So go ahead, Dee. Keep going. So, you know, first I thought that was a little light. And yeah. when they charged them, I felt like that they left themselves room for negotiation. Uh, in terms of, of plea bargaining, you mean? Yes. I think that's probably right. Yeah, I, I feel think. that way, and I felt like the matter should have uh, just been pulled out. of. It's hard to get things out of Florida. We know that. Well, we're, we're <laughs> learning that, but Dee. I felt like the matter should have just gone right up to the feds because it appears that when, when it's in Florida, it never leaves. <laughs> <laughs> we know that with an election. Dee, will you do, you do a favor, Dee? Dee, call back every night, will you? I, <laughs> I love that laugh. You all, you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Dee. Bye, Dee. Got Nancy on Facebook who writes, Zimmerman should have been in jail a long time ago. Again, 44 days, and people are going to talk about those 44 days, I bet, for a long time. Got Albert in New York. Hello there, Albert. What do you got? Hey, guys, how you doing? Um, I have a question and a statement. All right. uh, in New York, we don't have bail hearings for murder. I was wondering why they're doing that in Florida. All right. and hold on, hold on with that. Hold on. I have Dr. 
Mark Ergo has answered that question. Well, my understanding there is that you do get a hearing, mm. um, and there is a presumption, and then you have to rebut it, basically, is what it is. That's the legal terms for it. But you do get a hearing, um, and then a judge will decide. Albert, go ahead. You okay, have one, and, uh, but you I also... I don't believe this is uh, something like a publicity stunt. I don't believe that this guy is going to be prosecuted. I just think that uh, they just want to show that they're taking uh, a step ahead and basically just going to let the whole thing... Just Look, Albert, why, why do you say that? Because uh, it, it, it's been several in, in the recent years that the same, almost the same thing has occurred, and... Nothing has, has, has happened at all. You know, this is what we, Drew and I discussed this the other night. One of the things that, for somebody who's been close to the criminal justice system like I have, a lot of people in the minority community, because they get disproportionately prosecuted, in 30 years, generally the only people who shoot and kill somebody and don't get arrested are cops. But usually it's arrest first, ask questions later. That's why people are so cynical, and I think that's why this case resonates. And that's why Albert's saying he that's thinks it's That's why Albert a, thinks that it may be a setup. And I'll tell you, if, uh, in fact, some judge grants immunity, there's going to be people who think all along it was a setup. Wow. Okay, let's go back to Facebook. Shelly says, my reaction is a question. Was he arrested due to the public demanding it? Which is sort of the same theme here, which and, is, uh, and, you know. And uh, let me tell you, Shelly's question is great uh, because when you're, if this gets past an immunity hearing, a judge says, no, there's no immunity, and you're in front of a jury, and you're picking that jury, that's where this whole case, we talked the other night about how racial bias may be conscious or unconscious. Right. It's the same way people view this case. That's how people are going to select a jury. That's how the defense lawyer is going to view who he wants on this case. This case, if it gets to a jury, is going to be over after jury selection. So whoever the jury is is going to determine the outcome. They're going to not only determine the outcome, but remember... I don't care who your juror is and how great of a lawyer you are, you're never going to turn somebody's life experiences around in a six-week trial or something like that. Somebody comes to that case, they've got their own baggage, they're going to decide that case and view the facts through the prism of what they know. Now, isn't, isn't though one of the goals of the justice system as our country has established it is the, the will of the people? I mean, it's well, to yeah, some extent. I mean, so it's, but to say that the public demanded this is sort of saying justice is being served, right? To some degree, but you never want a lynch mob mentality, and that's kind of why you're supposed to have prosecutors be the gatekeepers. And Got so it. you hope that the prosecutor is the gatekeeper. Got it. Claudia in Texas. Go ahead, Claudia. Hi, Dr. Drew. I just had a, a quick question. I was wondering if it's possible to compare the mugshot of George Zimmerman, Zimmerman with the most recent picture shown in the media of him before the 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 killing of Trayvon All right, well, well, let's let's do this. Can you can you guys put both in the Christie behind me here? Can you put both pictures up behind? Is that possible? Just you can just put the most recent mugshot up. Is that right? Put it yeah, up there. The, the uh, and, and they show today and there it is. There it is. Now, Claudia, what do you want to know about this particular shot? I was shot? just wondering, is it possible to tell in his nose if just 44 oh. days prior was he pummeled so hard that he felt he needed to take this person's life? That with his head being. There's a little something there, but uh, I, I don't know that I would call that a major nasal fracture by any means, even if he had a sort of a straightening procedure. It'd be 40, well, a month later, but, you know, it's hard to say, my dear. It's an interesting question. I don't, I don't think, you know, if Mark hired me to say something in court, don't, I don't... Don't look at me for nasal fractures. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I, I could really say much of anything. It certainly wasn't a major fracture, that's for sure. So I would say yeah. that for sure. Mary on Facebook says, I'm afraid it might have been overcharged and he might get off like Casey Anthony. Unless they have some evidence otherwise that we don't know about. Well, that was my concern, too, but you guys are all saying no. No, I don't think, I, I don't have that same feeling. Remember, Casey Anthony was a capital case. I mean, that was totally overcharged. Apologies to Jeff, who was just your previous guest. But in this case, you're going to have lesser included offenses. You're going to have immunities. You're going to have all kinds of uh, nuances in terms of whether it was self-defense, who was the aggressor, how much force was used, what did you think uh, at the moment that you pulled this gun, it, was there a struggle? I mean, this is a very, uh, when people say the facts are pretty clear, the facts are anything but clear in this case. As opposed to Casey when it was a little clearer. A I'm, little... I'm not going there. Okay. Well, speaking of not going there, uh, apparently Jose Baez just texted, I'm literally, am, am, I, am I right this actually happened? He texted one of my producers just now, and he said to Jeff Ashton, stop crying, the Casey Anthony case is over. Well, I don't Jose? think, I know if he meant for us to share that on television, but, but okay, he called, he asked, and so sure, there you I'll, go. I'll check and see if I've got a text from Jose. Here, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jose, um, come on I back. I do. I, 
Oh, there you are. What does yeah, he say? He, just called. he actually see. called uh, Mark here. Goes, but Jose, as I said, you're welcome back with Casey. Bring her on in. We'll have. He we'll says, have. I don't find out. Tell Ashton to stop crying. The case is over. You can say I said it. Well, there, there you go. You go.